So this is what happens when you put a biker on COVID-19 lockdown during a beautiful summer where he can't go out on his bike um, and has access to eBay. And therefore, you may be in for a culture shock. <clears throat> Built in the 1950s, they are still more than capable of fighting fires efficiently. With its high efficiency pumping capabilities, well maintained equipment, and simplicity of operation. The Bedford engine is a six cylinder, five litre petrol driven unit coupled to a simple four speed gearbox. Lockers one to five are on the near side of the vehicle, six to ten are on the off side. There's no power steering. It can be a very difficult vehicle to drive, especially when full of water. Great care must be taken driving this vehicle. So how did this all begin? Well, to make a very long story, a short story, um, about a week before the UK went into lockdown due to COVID-19, I bought a 1956 Bedford's Green Goddess, similar to the one behind me. Um, the problem was, during lockdown, the man who owned the particular fire engine um, was suffering from medical complications and was quite vulnerable. Um, the vehicle itself was locked in a barn near, why, uh, near where he lived, and in front of the fire engine, uh, were a number of other vintage vehicles which were also owned by um, elderly slash vulnerable people. So unless I wanted to start a uh, wave of corona, then I couldn't exactly get it delivered during lockdown or while coronavirus was still rampant and spreading. So it had to hold. So obviously it's been over a month now and I needed a project. So I had a look around um, and throughout the UK there was no other listings of these green goddesses, They're, they just don't exist. They're getting harder and harder to find, mainly because they've all been shipped um, abroad, um, especially in sort of third world countries. They're used actually still today, um, as in the regular fire service. They're, they're very hard to find. However, um, one of the guys I follow on eBay um, sent me a message and said, I've just found this in the yard, forgot we even had it. Um, it's been sat outside for four years. So this is the actual one here. And this is the one that I got delivered today. So it needs a bit more work than the other one I've already bought. But basically, I've now bought two 66 and 65 year old Bedford Green Goddesses fire engines. Um, yeah, and this one got delivered today. So let's take a look. Well, there you go, 1956. Bit of a change to the battery, bit of adjustment of the carb, and she's absolutely purring. Everything works on her, bar the uh, blues and twos, but that's just because of a fuse, so I can get that done. Uh, most of the lights are working on her. Most of the cabin doors are all working. Bit of an interior tour. Uh, haven't tested the the main pump yet, so I'll. Uh, give that a test today at least prime anyway I can't try it with water until I got hydrant um, yeah it's even got the uh, original Coventry Climax as a backup pump I mean if you had to use that you really were fucked um, but yeah Okay, so we're sat now in the cabin of this 1956 Bedford ZRL ZH uh, fire engine. Inside in the cabin then, uh, it's largely original uh, as to what it would have originally been. The only slight addition is uh, this switch here controls uh, windscreen washer, uh, which was not original um, and has been added 
Um, I may seek to remove that as well because it's not, not the best installation off to the side. Um, someone has also done this horrific job of installing um, 12 volt power. So there's a cigarette um, sort of style socket just here uh, and a second hole where they've obviously just removed it because it didn't fit. Um, but as you can see, it's, you know, there's wiring poking out and it, it's just a little bodge job. They've clearly just lifted up this um, uh, metal panel here and just shoved it under which is a shame because they've drilled directly through the, um, the metal. Um, so the plan is I'm, I'm probably going to look to strip this out um, or at the very least tidy it up and try and get a different um, fascia cover for it. Aside from that then, every, everything else is pretty much original. Um, it has had the updated um, beacon installed on top, um, as you see from the lighting panel. There's no switch for the beacon at the minute, so I'm going to have to get one of these old um, uh, push-pull switches. Um, but that's that's not too bad. Um, the beacon itself, though, I've got suspicions that it was done um, post the uh, latest strikes in the 2000s. Um, just because the beacons on top look a little bit newer than I'd expect. And also, it's a pretty poor job, to be honest. The wiring uh, is not great. Uh, you know, it's sort of, um, it's like banana clips and then a bit of electrical tape around. It's not the best. Um, and then it's quite roughly done into the box here. Um, we'll take a look at the actual wire in a separate video because you've got the two control panels. You've got this control panel here, which controls the two-tone um, siren. So on this control panel, you've got reverse lights, fog lights, hazard lights, uh, and you've got a nice little indicator here. This indicator here flashes when you've got hazards on or when you've got your left and right indicators. Indicators then is done by the white switch here, so that's left indicator, neutral, and right indicator. Um, so you've got to remember to turn it off because sometimes um, it's easy to leave it on. And then obviously beacon and two tone. Up here then is all your lighting controls. So um, you've got two switches here for lockers. You've got a switch here for the spotlights. So you can probably just see the handle here, but there's a spotlight on the roof that you can manually adjust with that handle. Um, and that also controls, there's two uh, red intermittent flashing lights on the front, um, sort of a very old style of beacon, uh, and that runs, and that runs that. Interior lights, there's an interior light, there's one uh, light in the cabin here. Uh, that runs off 12 volt. It takes two 12 volt like glow star bulbs, uh, six watts, I believe, originally. Um, uh, they're dead already. Um, so I've, d I've did a quick uh, continuity test, so the circuit still functions, it's still power, it's still getting the 12 volts, um, so the bulbs have just gone in that. So uh, we're going to replace those with LEDs um, because it's hidden underneath a glass fascia, which I'll show you now. So you won't be able to see them anyway, so that'll be diffused, and it just means it's less uh, energy consumption, um, and hopefully it will just you know prolong the life of things a little bit. Uh, the downside to well, one of the many downsides to this vehicle is that all the lights you've got here um, and all the interior lights um, and even the headlights, um, uh, dip lights, all the lights basically, absolutely anything electrical, you can switch on without putting the key in the ignition. If you leave a, a light on and you don't realise, you know, unless it's an indicator where you can physically hear the relay clicking over, uh, it can drain the battery instantly. You know, the, the windscreen wipers, again, um, don't need the key in or anything like that. Um, so, you know, that's that's a little bit concerning. So I'm thinking about putting a battery isolator on one of the terminals, just a really basic, it clips on, and then you screw it in to make the connection or you screw it out um, to loosen that connection. The, the main issues and, and the main things to cover with this one is the roof does have a few leak spots. Um, so the and a, a small patch of, of dry rot in a few places so the roof is going to need um, either stripping in certain parts or a complete replacement uh, i'm always i was always going to replace the roof anyway i'm going to replace that with liquid rubber rather than the felt um, uh, bitumen based just because it's a lot more durable um, and won't need frequent replacement that brings me to the second major job. So in here then in the interior cabin, um, there is quite a bit of peeling paint, uh, as you can probably see. So 
that's all going to need to be scraped off um, and just completely stripped down back to the, the bare wood. Um, and what I'll do then is, again, there's no major defects in it, so that's just going to need um, sanding, priming, painting, um, uh, and that's pretty much it. The cab then as well, so there's this nest of, of wires that leads down to the really ugly um, windscreen washer that was, you know, I, I don't know if it was a last minute um, add in by the military during strikes, but I highly doubt it because it's an absolute bodge job. We need to fix up the electrics, which is going to be a whole video on itself. Um, there's nothing massively wrong with the electrics apart from obviously the beacon at the minute doesn't work. Um, we need to get the interior light working. Um, the locker lights, I want to swap all those bulbs out for LEDs because at the minute they're old style filament uh, incandescent, which means there's more uh, power drain on the battery when they're in use, but also that you know they're not as strong, they're only housed in um, like a metal grill. Um, so over a, a bump, it's, it's easily damaged. So we'll just we'll just swap all that out. Um, replace the hazard switch at the minute. It's just a toggle switch. Um, I want to replace that with a proper style uh, pull uh, push switch like the others. And then we'll get a beacon switch installed. The spotlight at the minute uh, doesn't work. So the handle is just here. So it just adjusts like that. Uh, you know, you can twist it. Um, now I'm hoping massively that it's just the bulb um it's, it's quite a large bulb i'm hoping over the years it's just burnt out whatever um but to get to that is a bit of a pain because i can't get to it through the cabin which means i've got to go on the uh leaking slash rotten in parts roof and <laughs> lean over the front and twist it off that way so that's a bit of a pain um but that's another thing that's got to be done so at the minute the floor is this carpet stuff um it's not original, you know, original underneath, and it's not been done very well either. Original underneath is just uh, metal and wood. Um, and it's in pretty good condition. So my my plan is to strip out this old carpet because it's, it's, it's done really poorly. I mean, it looks like it's done with, a, a, you know, a drunk man with tin snips. Um, so I'm gonna rip all that carpet out. Uh, I'm going to sand it down and then I'll paint the bare metal with hammerite rust. I'm going to swap the base to black, um, uh, gloss black, uh, keep the walls as, as the original sort of brownie beige colour. Um, and then I'll, I'll reinstall a sort of industrial short pile carpet on top of it. But I'll do a much better job than this, this current stuff because I do like the idea of carpet because it stops the, you know people slipping, which if you've got kids coming in here, you know, or passengers, you, you don't want them slipping about. So... Um, yeah, the carpet's going to get replaced. So this is bench seat number one. Um, obviously, as you can see, you know the the, uh, the the stitching's just completely come away, which is a shame. However, we've still got the the fabric here, so it should be pretty easy for a, um, anyone with a bit of sewing experience to make up a new one. So I'll have to get that done. Um, the original foam's a bit worse for wear, but we'll get that changed then. Uh, that's the wiring I've shown you earlier. So this is going to the uh, old 12 volt style compressor um, and then that leads around to um, some form of relay over there um, which feeds into the windscreen washer um, and then there's some random wires dangling out there which I've yet to test. Um, this back shelf here is a, a lot of crap on it such as my car crawler and some various tools. Um, you can see at the back there there's a little bit um, little bit of damp nothing too major though so again that's all going to need to be stripped out possibly replace that panel there the shelf itself is actually okay the second seat then uh near perfect condition no rips no tears all good um and then the the bench seat as well is all good in the next video then what i'm going to cover is basically i'm going to run through um cleaning up uh the entire build so that means going in all the uh, cabinets and lockers to the left and right hand side. It's filled with um, hose pipes, the original branches. It's all there. So we'll go through that and we'll work on clearing out all the rubbish because there's a lot of random crap in here. This is going to be a bit of a project. You know, it's going to take me a little while, um, but I'm going to try and film as much of it as possible and I'll break it up. So after that, then you'll see separate episodes on me, you know, stripping down all the paint at the cab. Um, uh, and, and redoing that and I'll do that as a one-er so I'll do you know stripping priming painting done so you can see before and after and a bit of the process um, you know like redoing the roof um, changing all the fluids um, the I mean it's been sat for four years so the oil needs doing coolant definitely needs doing doing um, 
Potentially the differential oil is going to need changing. Um, the uh, yeah, there's, there's a lot of different fluids that might need replacing. Some of the lockers, the hinges are frozen, so they're going to need releasing. Um, some of them are missing a few screws, so they'll have to be all changed. Uh, the door handles, some of them, the lock underneath is rusted solid, so those will either need to be released or just change. I'll probably just change them, get um, new originals. You know, redoing the carpet underneath. Then there's not much uh, rust at all, but that's all going to be uh, sanded down, uh, primed, and then it's going to. Uh, I'm going to use Hammerite um, direct to rust, even though it won't be on a lot of rust, um, and that's uh, going to cover up most of the undercarriage and then the exhaust is going to get a treatment with uh, VHT paint, very high temperature um, spray paint, again all black, to protect it as much as possible. And then there's various jobs, you know, window seals, door seals, um, all sorts of stuff like that. If you are interested, click the bell button because that lets you know uh, when I post a new video, otherwise if you just subscribe, you, chances are you might not actually see the new video. And we hope the video has been informative. Um, if there are any facts and figures needed, you'll find them all in the fact pack in the vehicle cab.